Hello and welcome to OLT 321 European Literature. My name is Warren Reed and this is Lecture 13. We're going to talk briefly about Great Expectations, the novel by Charles Dickens, which I expect you to read or at least watch the movie. Now I think the sky behind me is just so nice, so I expect you'll appreciate it too. And now I expect I have to tell you what the objectives for this lecture are today. Uh, we're going to talk about the significance of the title. The I narrator, symbolism, and the relationship between Pip and Estella. This lecture is actually pretty simple, so it's not going to take very long. There's not too much to explain here. What's the title about? Great expectations. Well, someone who is hoping for something. He's got expectations. But it's not just one. It's many, many, many characters. From the top, we've got this criminal. Pip meets the criminal Magwitch in the graveyard in the beginning. What is the significance of the title, Great Expectations? Expectations are hopes, and so it reflects the fact that different characters have hopes. High hopes. Magwitch is an escaped criminal, and he forces Pip to help him. Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut your throat. No, sir, no. And later on, he's recaptured, but he never forgets the fact that Pip helped him. Anyway, he becomes rich and wants to help Pip to become a gentleman, which is something that he could never do, be because, you know, he's a criminal. Uh, Pip starts playing at somebody, some old lady's house, and there's a girl there, and he falls in love with her. Let me see you play cards with this boy. With this boy? But he is a common laboring boy. And look at his boots. Well, you can break his heart. And his hope is that he could be a gentleman so that he could, you know, be worthy of her love. Uh, second, there's the old lady herself, Miss Havisham. You know what I touch here. Your heart. Broken. Um, she had her heart broken, she was going to get married, and the man ran away before on the day of the wedding. And so from then on, she wants to, you know, destroy men, break their hearts. So her hope is that Estella, she, she helps, uh, she adopts Estella and wants to train her to break men's hearts. Then Estella, of course, she wants to break men's hearts, but then, of course, that's not very fulfilling. So anyway, that's about the title, people having a lot of hopes. Okay, briefly, we're going to talk about the I narrator. Okay, it's a first-person narrative. It's Pip's story told by himself, but it's told in an interesting way. Of course, if you're writing your life story, it means you're older and you're looking back. But when he's writing about when he was a boy, he sort of adopts the attitude of a boy. So, you know, a lot of the innocence and freshness comes through to us. The second thing about the I narrator is its confessional mode. It can be a place for confessions and what happens is that Pip admits those times when he's treated um, his relatives poorly and he feels bad about it. And so, you know, another character, we could really be, you know, disappointed with him, but, but him we, we, we try to understand and we forgive uh, because Pip has to be a sympathetic character after all. The other thing about the I narrator, as I mentioned, you know, for the people living at the time, they've seen all these things, but perhaps not through child's eyes. So it adds, adds freshness, and also it lets us have a, what feels like a real, realistic look into different aspects of society. You remember from Amal Flanders, this, this first-person narrator adds a sense of realism, like we're in the moment, we're there. It's not like 200 years ago. We feel like we're living in the moment with the character. Okay, now I want to talk about symbolism and great expectations. The first symbol is the marsh country. Uh, marsh is flooded land, which is not very good for much and it's, fa it's far from London, so we have this marshland which is backward and underdeveloped, and we have the opposite London, which is dry, well, it's, it has a river, okay, but it's, it's the opposite of the marshland. It's developed, it's a center of industry. So moving from the marsh to London, Pip travels from backwardness towards civilization. That's how it's shaped in the novel anyway. Of course, we can argue about that those of us who live in them, in the hills. 
Another symbol is Joe's forge. A forge is a place of fire. It's for making tools and things out of metal. And he's in the marsh country. It's the opposite of the industrialized centers in, around London, where things are made in a factory with you know, modern equipment. So it's a, it also reflects the backwardness. Also the fire. The fire creates things. It also destroys things, as it destroys Miss Havisham's house, and also then sets her free to rehumanize herself. And also the fire represents the family warmth, you know, the fire at home. Um, in countries where, you know, at night we have a fire to keep warm, or at least we used to. And so that fire, it's at home, so it, it reminds, it's a, it's a feel, feeling of family and of home also. And now let's talk about Pip's relationship with Estella. In fact, the main thing to remember is that Estella is mainly the reason for his expectations. You know, he, she inspires him because she's beautiful, she acts like a lady, she thinks he's not good enough because he's not a gentleman. So, you know, he's a kid, he falls in love with her, he thinks he has to become a gentleman. How, does he gonna, how is he going to become a gentleman? Well, then it turns out, oh, he has a chance when the convict starts sending him money through Jaggers, the lawyer, and sends him to London for schooling. So there his hope keeps going, and it's fueled by this desire for Estella. And in the end, he does marry her, but it's not the same. However, you know, he still loves her anyway, so all's well that ends well. I want to mention briefly about the, the symbol of fatherhood. Joe, he's a bit simple, and he, he loves Pip, but more like a little brother than a father, although he does try to raise him, show him the right things to do. But there's a symbolic father in Magwitch. Magwitch, you know, does those things that a father would do. He, he gets his son educated. So he sends money for Pip to go to school in London to help him become a gentleman, to help him enter the world in, in all the ways that can ensure his success. And it also turns out that Magwitch is the father of Estella. Now Pip loves Estella and eventually he marries her. Turns out then Magwitch becomes his father-in-law. So there's two ways he's a father. A father-in-law and in terms of relationships and then also symbolically as the person the, the male figure who helped him to enter society and become educated.